This is the Bible Explained by Pastor Michael Yeo. Before we begin, let us prepare our hearts through worship. spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me you have been so so kind to me Still your love fought for me You have been so, so good to me When I felt no worse You paid it all for me You have been so, so good Kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow.
Shalom and welcome to our Bible study on Luke. Now, I trust that you are growing in your knowledge of God's life-transforming Word and more importantly, you are beginning to understand the heartbeat of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the title for today's lesson is Trust Jesus in Fearful Situations. And we are taking a look at Luke 8, 49 to 56. Now, in verse 49, while Jesus was still speaking, someone came from Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher. Now, Jesus was still speaking to the woman who was healed when a messenger arrived. Now, what Jairus feared most had actually happened. His dear little girl had died. It was too late now for the teacher to heal her. So there was no longer any reason to bring Jesus to his home. Now in verse 50, But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Do not be afraid, only believe, and she will be made well. Now upon hearing the news, Jairus surely reacted in great sorrow. It seemed that the delay had been too long and it was now too late. But Jesus turned to the grieving man and wanted him to continue to believe that his daughter would be all right. Now, the fact that the daughter had died did not change anything for Jesus as far as he was concerned. Now, in verse 51, when Jesus came into the house, he permitted no one to go in except Peter, James and John and the father and mother of the girl. Now, these three particular disciples had become Jesus' inner circle to whom he gave special teaching and consideration. Now, verse 52 to 53, Now all wept and mourned for her. But Jesus said, Do not weep, she is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him, knowing that she was dead. Now the house was full of people, which probably included relatives and neighbours, as well as professional mourners who may have already arrived. Now, in the culture of the day, lack of weeping and wailing was the ultimate disgrace and disrespect. Jairus, the leader of the synagogue, was an important person in the town. Now, thus, at the death of his only daughter, the townspeople demonstrated their great love and respect by their intense grief. Yet, their weeping turned to derisive laughter at Jesus' words that the girl was not dead, only asleep. Now, she was indeed dead. But Jesus used the image of sleep to indicate that the girl's condition was temporary and that she would be restored. Now, for the Lord Jesus, death is nothing more than sleep, for He has power and authority over death. Now, in verse 54 to 55, But Jesus put them all outside, took her by the hand and called, saying, Little girl, arise. And then her spirit returned, and she arose immediately, and he commanded that she be given something to eat. Again, Jesus went against all ceremonial law and took the dead girl by the hand. He could have raised the girl without touching her, but in this case, he chose to take her hand. Now, in so doing, again, Jesus demonstrated that he would go past such ceremonial laws in order to show compassion on those in need. Now in verse 56, And her parents were astonished, but Jesus charged them to tell no one what had happened. Now the young girl's parents were overwhelmed and certainly overjoyed by 
telling the parents not to tell anyone about their daughter's healing, Jesus was not attempting to keep this a secret for the crowd outside was waiting and would see what had happened. Now, Jesus was more concerned for his ministry actually. Jesus did not want to be known as just a miracle worker. He wanted people to listen to his words that would heal their broken spiritual lives. Now, if crowds descended on him to see dead people raised, they would not be coming with the attitude needed to hear and to respond to the gospel. Now, some reflections here. Clearly, what happened in this passage was a lesson in faith for Jairus and his wife, for the disciples and for us. In fearful situations, we must overcome hindrances to faith and put our trust in Jesus. There are two applications I would like to make here. Number one is this, there are benefits for us even in fearful situations. There were at least three benefits to Jairus that apply to us. One is this, fearful situations help us clarify our priorities. It's easy to drift off course in life and to spend our time in things that are not in line with our priorities. And we don't stop and think about it until a crisis like this brings us up short. As a synagogue ruler, Jairus was responsible for the maintenance of the building and for arranging the services. It was a position of status given only to those who had money and who had prestige. But all of his success and prestige in the community suddenly pale in significance when he was faced with the loss of his only daughter. Now, worldly success does not insulate anyone from tragedy and from death. Money may afford a person access to the best medical treatment available, but doctors can only do so much. Now, I pray that none of us would have to go through what Jairus went through in order for us to see our need for the Lord Jesus. But I also believe that if ever such a time comes, He will give us the strength to face it. Now, the second thing is that fearful situations also strip away our pride and let the Lord prove Himself mighty on our behalf. Now, this fearful situation stripped Jairus of any pride. He fell at Jesus' feet, totally helpless. It wasn't a dignified place for a synagogue ruler to be, but he did not care. He knew he needed Jesus to intervene, and he was willing to admit his need and be humble, even in public. Now, that's what gives the Lord the opportunity to prove Himself mighty on our behalf. No matter how successful you may be, are you continuously walking in humble dependence on Jesus? The third thing is this, fearful situations remind us of our mortality and drives us to trust in Christ. Necessity is not only the mother of invention, it is also the mother of faith. We don't trust God as we should until we are forced to trust Him. There is nothing that drives us to desperation and fear like the threat of losing a child. But our fear can be God's opportunity if we trust in Him. The thing is this, we put our hopes on this life which is just so tentative. We live and plan our lives as if death is a far distant thing, something we need not think about until we are in our 80s, perhaps. But that which matters most to us can actually be taken quickly 
end without warning. When we stare death in the face, be it our own or the death of a loved one, we are suddenly reminded that life is a vapour and that we must be right with God. Are you in a fearful situation today? Would you consider it an opportunity to clarify your priorities, to strip away your pride and to drive you to trust in Jesus so that He can be glorified through it? Now, the second application is this. In fearful situations, Jesus encourages us to put our trust in Him. Now, I love the way that Jesus encouraged and nurtured Jairus' weak faith even in this crisis. He does the same with us today. Now, take note of the three ways that Jesus encourages us to trust Him in fearful times. One is this, Jesus' willingness to accept us where we are at encourages us to trust Him. Jairus believed in Jesus, but it wasn't an especially strong faith, actually. The nobleman from Capernaum had believed that Jesus' word spoken in Cana would heal his son from that distance. The centurion from Capernaum believed that Jesus could heal his servant by speaking the word without even entering his house. But Jairus didn't go and plead, speak the word and my daughter will get well. In fact, he asked Jesus to come and lay hands on her. It was a kind of a weak faith in comparison to the others. But Jesus accepted it and worked with what Jairus had from that point. Now, are you willing to trust Jesus to accept you and work with you from where you are. The other thing is this, Jesus' tenderness encourages us to trust Him. When word came that his daughter had died, Jairus' face must have reflected fear and panic. But Jesus quickly and tenderly calmed him. Don't be afraid, just trust me. Now, Notice how tenderly Jesus dealt with the little girl as well. He took the dead girl's hand, a defiling act for a Jew. His touch communicated that he cared for her. Now, what is your perspective of God today? Do you see Him as a cold, faraway supreme being? Or do you see Him as a tender, loving Abba Father? The other thing is this, Jesus' mighty power over death encourages us to trust Him. For Jesus, raising the dead was as easy as raising a sleeping child would be for us. He merely spoke the word and the dead girl came to life. Now, each time Jesus raised the dead, He did it by speaking. Now to the widow of Nain's son, Jesus said, Young man, I say to you, in Luke 7. Now to Lazarus, Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. This is in John 11. Now Jesus said, An hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs shall hear my voice and shall come forth, some to eternal life, others to judgment, in John chapter 5. Now what a claim. On that coming day, his voice will cause bodies decomposed for centuries to be resurrected. Even now, he speaks to those who are spiritually dead and imparts new life to them by his grace. No matter how fearful the situation, Jesus wants us to trust him. Now, he may or may not deliver our loved ones or us even from terminal diseases. But even if He does not, we can trust His mighty power and know that one day, one day He will speak the word and all, all of us, we who have trusted in Him, will be gathered with Him, triumphant over sin and over death. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, 
Thank you for the assurances that are found when we study the Bible. Today, again, we acknowledge that our fearful situations can be used by you to benefit us. Fearful situations can help us to clarify our priorities, strip away our pride and drive us to trust in you. We are also grateful that we can always put our trust in you in our fearful situations. We are assured that you, the one who has power over death, are always willing to accept us where we are and treat us with tenderness when we come to you. As the days go by, may we experience the transforming power of your love in a greater measure. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining this session of The Bible Explained. If you've been blessed by this study, please like and share our church Facebook page and YouTube channel so more can be blessed by God's Word. If you'd like to get connected with us, there's the comment section or you can visit www.churchofpraise.org.my We'll see you in the next session as we continue our reading of the book of Luke. Do read the relevant passages beforehand in order to get the best out of the study. Lastly, if you have any questions, reach out to us via equipped at churchofpraise.org.my and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Looking forward to seeing you again.